Hi folks, my name is Hector Garcia. I'm an accountant and my YouTube channel that you're watching at the moment, it's all about accounting, finance, QuickBooks, Excel tutorials, that sort of thing. Today I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna do a Photoshop tutorial. Now the reason why I'm doing a Photoshop tutorial is because I just came back from a YouTubers conference where we kind of uh, looked at our YouTube channels and figure out what we were doing right and what we were doing wrong. And it turns out that kind of like the worst thing about my YouTube channel was the thumbnails. Now let me explain what thumbnails are. So let's say for example, you are in YouTube and you search something like QuickBooks online tutorial, which most of my videos are about uh, QuickBooks. Now, these first two that you see here, these are good thumbnails, okay? They're, they're very well put together. They have uh, my face, they have big letters on it. Thumbnails need to be able to be uh, enticing for someone to click. They also need to be um, attractive when you look at it on an iPhone. So you have to think about the dimensions of that as well. So these first two, I actually uh, put some nice thumbnails together to make those look nice. But for example, if you look at this third one here, uh, not a nice thumbnail. So, and same thing with this fourth one. These, these are all videos of mine. So what I wanna show you is how to get to like this sort of random screenshot that YouTube puts together to something that looks really nice and well put together like this one. So I'm gonna search for QuickBooks reports because this is one of my favorite videos. Um, this one here called QuickBooks Desktop Tutorial reports, basics, and financial statement analysis. Now, I'll, I'll admit that that's kind of a long, crappy title, and that's probably the reason why it's underperforming. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna assume that the video is good and the title is good, and I'm just gonna focus on the thumbnail for a second. So let me go ahead and, so, so you can see now uh, what the thumbnail looks like. So it's just a, basically a random screenshot of somewhere in the 53 minute video. So I'm gonna click on it, and what I'm gonna do here, let me hit pause here for a second. Um, I'm gonna take two screenshots. I'm gonna take one screenshot of my face, uh, the, which is basically in the introduction of the video. And then I'm gonna take a screenshot of like, I would say like the perfect screenshot of the video that makes the most sense uh, in terms of telling the story of what the video is all about. So let me go all the way to the beginning. Let me hit play, because I, I, I know I was uh, talking at the beginning. So I'm gonna try to keep, uh, capture the best possible screenshot of my face at the beginning of the video. So I'm gonna hit uh, play and then I'm gonna try to hit pause on the right spot. Okay, maybe that one. Let's just say that that's the one I'm gonna put. I'm looking at the camera, my mouth is open. It looks like I'm in the middle of some action or I'm about to say something. So that's probably a great one to use. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna take a screenshot. In a Mac, you do Command Shift 4 and it opens up basically a, a, a tool that allows you to basically just uh, select uh, the screen. So I basically just selected the screen and let go and that's gonna sort of take a picture or a screenshot, put it somewhere in the desktop. If you're on a PC, there's something called the snipping tool. You have to figure out how to use that. But uh, in a Mac, just go Command Shift 4 and it will do that. Okay, so let's see, let me fast forward a little bit more. Maybe I'll find uh, some other part of the video that shows, okay, I like this one. It's got um, two reports back to back. This is this probably is a good uh, representation of what the video um, it's all about. So let me um, uh, do another screenshot here and I'll select uh, what's going on here. Perfect. And that's it. So I got my two screenshots and that's basically what I'm gonna work uh, from. So let me now open Photoshop. There we go. So I'm gonna click on create new. So I'm gonna create a new file. You can also go to file, new, uh, either one works. Uh, so I'm gonna go to file, new, create new. And it's gonna ask me for the dimensions. Now, the dimensions for a YouTube uh, th thumbnail is 1280 by 720. Now, depending on what you're trying to do, obviously the dimensions could be different, but the one for a YouTube video is 1280 by 720. So I will stick to that and then I'll hit on create. So that creates uh, the files so as a blank file. There's really nothing there. Let me go ahead and maximize this window so I have uh, more workspace. Um, I'm gonna hit uh, Command Plus, probably Control Plus on a PC to zoom in. Uh, here where it says View, uh, right now we have the rulers on. You can see the rulers are on and the extras are on. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the rulers on because those are useful, but turn off 
sorry, leave the rulers on, turn off the extras. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so now I'm sort of in a, in a blank screen here. And then I'm gonna click and drag those uh, screenshots that I had in, um, in, in my computer that I took from the, from the video. So I'm gonna click and drag the first one. And there it is. This was the screenshot of uh, somewhere in the middle of my video that was showing what I was doing. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Notice that um, automatically this is selected and all the corners have little dots in them, right? That allows you to uh, make them bigger or smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make this bigger. I'm gonna hold the shift key because if I don't hold the shift key, I can uh, change the aspect. So it's gonna look all weird like that. So let me uh, undo that. Hold on, let me just go back and undo that. And I'm gonna hold the shift key when I make bigger or smaller. That way it keeps uh, the aspect ratio. So I'm kind of just uh, filling the screen here. Okay, that's probably good. And I'm just kind of clicking and dragging. That's probably good. Uh, on this same mode, notice that your cursor turns into this uh, rotation um, rotation mode. So I can also rotate this a little bit like that, see? And I can probably do a little bit of uh, this effect where I have it kind of uh, tilted. And I think something like that will work. Um, let me make it a little bit smaller because maybe it wasn't getting to what I wanted. Yeah, something like this. No, it probably should be bigger. Obviously, you're gonna figure out on your own what works best for you. So I'm gonna do it like this. I think this is good. I'm gonna hit enter. So that's gonna stand uh, still there. I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag the other image of uh, that was a still of me sitting there. And I'm also gonna make that a little bit bigger. Actually, I don't need to make it that much bigger. Uh, let's just make it about the size of the screen. Press enter. So what I want to do is I wanna have a cutout of my face uh, in the front and I wanna have that screenshot in the background. So. There's different ways to uh, to cut out the face. Um, I'm gonna show you a couple of tools. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Okay, and after I drag that image in there, what I want to do essentially is I wanna basically cut out uh, kind of just me and have that screen in the background uh, right behind it and kind of just maybe give it a drop shadow effect or something like that. So uh, to cut the image out, and believe it or not, this seems really intimidating. It's actually really easy with Photoshop. You have to use a tool called the pen tool, which is uh, somewhere on here. Here it is. That's right there, the pen tool. So I'm gonna click right there on the pen tool and um, it's it got a couple of options. You got pen, free form. So I'm gonna use the pen tool, but I'm also going to enable a window called the history window. And the reason why I want the history window is because I want to uh, be able to go back anywhere I was before uh, quickly. And you're gonna see how that works as I you know, probably screw this up uh, somehow. So let me zoom in a little bit. Um, I hit uh, Command Plus to zoom in. And I'm gonna select my pen tool and then I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna start in a very easy spot like uh, maybe here on top, of my, on top of the hat. Okay, so I'm gonna click on top of the hat here somewhere. And then I'm gonna click in another point uh, right when I see uh, curvature. And I'm gonna click and drag to shape that curve. See that? So I'll click and drag to shape that curve. And we can kind of fix these after. Then I'm gonna click on this spot here. Let me zoom in. I'm gonna click on this spot and also shape that curve. Then I'm gonna click maybe somewhere on here and then shape the curve. And notice what's happening. See, it's actually um, shaping itself around it. So I'm gonna click on this spot, uh, shape that curve. If I actually hold the con the command key, probably control on, on the window side, I can actually move any of these points, right? So if I wanted to maybe adjust uh, one of these points, I can do that. I can adjust this point here and I can actually fix the curvature. Whoops, let me go back here. So I can fix the curvature uh, by hitting that, that uh, command button on the Mac, probably control on the PC and allows me to control any of these points. So you see that? So it just, it does look a little bit intimidating, but um, it really isn't. Uh, once you start playing with it, you start uh, getting accustomed to it. See, I, I screwed up, so I wanted to go back. Um, let's see, I can change that and I can keep going. Okay, something like this is good. Okay, so as long as there's a pretty good line going around it, that's good. And I'm gonna keep going, right? It's actually gonna follow through from the last point I was. So I'm gonna come here and then maybe I'll do a little bit circling. There we go. Come down here under the ear. Let me hit command and change the shape of this. I can zoom out. Okay, 
let me do here here here's where it gets a little bit tricky because i got the earlobe going on so maybe i can come here and hit command and expand some of these curves see how you can stand some of these curves this is actually a really neat tool i never went to design school but i can imagine that design school spends a lot of time teaching this stuff let me keep going down see right here i have a little bit of opportunity for curvature okay that came out good and then let's say i want to cut uh zoom out so i'm going to cut my my shirt and the microphone so let me keep going here i notice i'm not uh focusing so much in the detail for now i'm just clicking i like guess sometimes just uh just get a shape out and then you can uh, fix it afterwards so Okay, so something like this will work. Let me scroll here to the left. Um, I'm probably not gonna go farther than this. Um, so I can cut at this point. So I'm gonna come down here. Okay, scroll to the right. And then I'm gonna come all the way across, make a line there and just keep going here. So I'm just, I'm not even bothering with curvature at this point. I'm just uh, clicking to shape the outline. I did it a little bit with the ear there. Let me zoom in again. There we go. I'm sure you like to zoom in. You get to kind of see what's going on here. And, you know, I got a tricky thing going on here with my glasses and the hair and the hat. So you'll see, it'll come out really good. So I'll hit Command to expand these little things here. Perfect. Let's see. Okay, let me hit Command minus to zoom out and let's keep going here okay and notice on the very last one it closes the loop see that so now you you see the complete shape and it closes the loop so all i have to do is let me zoom in if i wanted to uh, circle any of these things i would i would hit uh command to select any of these dots you see that and the ones that i i had a curvature for uh, those I can edit. I'm hitting the option or the alt key to basically add curvature to it. See that? Uh, I'm going to hit uh, undo here. So before I did that, I had this uh, basically this straight line, right? So if I hit the alt or the option key, it turns into this little... Um, sort of like an angle, like a triangle. And once you do that, it creates a curve. See that? So once you got the curve, I can hit uh, Command or Control to uh, organize my curves to make, make this work. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Let's do, let's, let's get some curves here. So you don't have to get the curves right away. You can always edit the curves afterwards. This looks very intimidating, trust me, over over time, it's really fun. It is time consuming, I'll tell you that much. I'm an accountant, I'm supposed to be doing accounting work, not uh, not graphic design work. I, I kind of enjoy doing this, but um, but this is not what pays the bills. But I do need to have better thumbnails. It was part of, it was part of the reason why I went to that YouTuber conference. So, uh, okay, let's see what else we got here. We got some opportunity for curvature here. So again, I'm hitting Alt or Option and getting a little bit of curves there. And hitting control or, or command to organize these there's another one here so let's expand the curvatures okay that's good no, it doesn't have to be perfect yeah it doesn't have to be perfect okay um so now that i have that uh, selection there what i'm going to do is i'm going to come here make sure that i have my window uh layers open uh and um or it can either be layers or uh path i think path will work too path so you're going to see here on the right hand side that i have my path going my path is those lines that i created so i can actually come to path and click on make selection and then once i click on make selection it gives me a couple of options uh usually you want to do a feather ratio of maybe zero one or two and that basically tells you the error or the amount of slack between the line and the background so i'm going to put two here and then hit okay so basically created a selection and um and it, it created a little bit of a smoothness effect because i did that too and then i'm going to do uh select inverse 
Let me zoom out for a second. So now I selected the inverse and I can just hit delete. Actually, let me go back to layers here. And very important, this uh, has to be rasterized. So that's why it didn't work. So I have to right click on it and click on uh, rasterize later, uh, layer. Now I don't know what that means. Uh, but in a nutshell means make it editable, I guess. So I'm gonna click on rasterize layer and then I'm gonna hit uh, delete. Yeah, perfect. So that took care of that really, really quick. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit to show you. Notice that there's a little bit of that blurry effect in the cut. That's because I gave it um, that feather ratio. Let me go back here for a second just to show you. So let's go back here. Okay, so we're at this point where, uh, where I did the selection. Let me go back to paths here and click on uh, make selection. And I'm gonna do a feather ratio of zero and hit okay. And then uh, let's rasterize this thing again. Remember that weird word, rasterize. And let's do select inverse and then delete. Now you will notice now that there is no, uh, none of that blurry effect. Now it depends on the type of image you have. You may want to do that, may not. Obviously you have to experiment with different options. So I'm gonna select this layer here. I'm gonna put me in a corner here somewhere. There we go. Uh, let me zoom out for a second. Yeah, that's probably way too much. Actually, no, that could be interesting. Let me, I'm gonna drag it a little bit left. I'll, I'll keep the, I'll keep the microphone as part of the image. I just don't want to take over the whole image. I'll do that. And then what I'll do is I'll add some effects to it. So there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, the most obvious one is I'm going to click, I'm going to right click here on my layer. And the layers are the different images that we're sort of putting on top of each other. So I'm going to right click here and click on blending options. Okay. That's what it's called, blending options. And then I'm going to get this uh, window menu pop up and it gives you a couple of op options. I like stroke and um, you will notice here that it's creating this white separation that right? just makes it pop out. So I really like stroke and depending on how good your cut is, uh, the stroke will come out as, as well. I'm going to make it, let's say, 30 pixels. And you kind of see right there, um, you see that, that white outline that happens um, uh, around my image. And I'm also going to do uh, outer glow, and that's maybe one of those common ones you see everywhere. And you can play here with the opacity to see um, how how dark you want it. You can play, change the color. You can change the size, right? Change the spread. Okay, that just basically changes all the settings to it. So I think that's probably pretty good. I think that stroke is too big. Let me make it 20. Yeah, no, I don't like it. Let's make it 15. That's probably better. So we hit OK. So that's good. So now we got. Uh, my image there, we have the stroke. That looks pretty good. Now let's add some text. So I'm going to click on the text icon here on the left-hand side. And by the way, if you're using Photoshop and you don't see that, that toolbar on the left, go to Window and go to uh, Tools. I think it was Tools. Let's go Window, Tools. Yes, that's what it was. So Window, Tools. And let me get Options back on. I don't know what that was, but that's probably important. So we'll get... Um, so we want the text, I notice we have a couple of options, horizontal type, vertical type. We probably want to do horizontal type. And um, so we'll we'll pick the, the, the font color up here. So let's make that font color. Um, I usually like to pick um, a spot uh, from, the, from the screen to make the font color, make it all kind of congruent. So I'm going to pick uh, maybe somewhere around here, this dark blue. That's probably good. So I'll pick that in the picker and then I'll hit okay. And then I can click anywhere and type QuickBooks. Now, you probably can't see anything because the font is too small. So let me select that and make that 72. Okay, that's good. See, there you go. Okay, so we're gonna do, let's type, let's, let me go back and select this. So QuickBooks, desktop, reports, And financial statements. All right, we'll, we'll work on the title. Let me um, let me change this to uh, write justified. I should probably select this whole text. So select the whole text, write justified. Let me hit uh, the move uh, tool here on the left-hand side. And I'll move this here to the left. 
Should probably make that font bigger. Let's make this whole thing a hundred. Okay, that could work. Now, because I picked that same color, notice that it's becoming uh, kind of hard to read. So I'm just gonna do a uh, right click on the layer and click on blending options and go to the stroke. The stroke should help. See how it immediately makes it uh, uh, visible. So let me go back to stroke here and let me lower that a little bit. And maybe 10 will be good enough. There you go, that's good. We'll do an outer glow as well. I'll uh, kind of keep the whole uh, process uh, consistent there. Okay, that's that's pretty good. Maybe, we'll see. Let's hit uh, OK. Let's change this title. And let's make it a smaller font. Let's make this um, up here. We'll make that maybe 70. See if we can make it all the same line. Okay, that's good. Actually, I, I kind of like that. Let me make, I'm gonna make QuickBooks desktop. I'm not gonna make it italic, so I'm gonna uh, change the font up here in the top, and I'm gonna just make it just regular bold. Okay, and then I'll hit the move tool, and we'll see, okay, that's that's probably that's probably better. I think I like that. Um, looks like the background is kind of getting on the way, so I'm gonna click on, uh, on the layer of the background, and what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make that background bigger. So I'm gonna click on the selection tool. And then I'm gonna right click somewhere in the image and click on free transform. I'm gonna hit the shift key, make that, drag it to the right. Yeah, I kinda, yeah, I don't want that to get in the way. So I think that will work, that works better. Now what I'll do is because I don't want all the text in the background to be confusing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to uh, filter and I'm gonna go to blur and Gaussian or Gaussian blur. I don't know how to, I don't know how to pronounce that. Gaussian, Gaussian, it's the blur. So we're gonna click on that and you're gonna get this pop-up window that tells you, hey, how much of a blur you want. So at this point, I can choose really how much of a blur I want. And that's really based on what I'm trying to achieve. So maybe we'll um, make it blurry enough so the text is not, um, uh, distracting but you can still kind of tell that it is a QuickBooks report so I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK and then one thing I like to do is here in the layer section I'm gonna create a new layer I click on the new layer icon and I'm gonna drag this all the way to the bottom and while I'm here on the, on the new layer uh, I'm gonna select use the selection tool select the whole square so I basically just uh, selected the whole square and remember that I'm on this layer so I'm sort of four steps behind I'm gonna select a, a color in my color picker on the left hand side. And I'll pick um, a color from here. Maybe I'll pick this light blue. And then I click OK. And then I'm gonna right click and click on fill. And once I do fill, I'm gonna choose a foreground color. So what I'm doing is I'm just creating a background. I'm gonna hit OK. Now you can't tell anything yet because it's behind a couple of these layers. If I actually um, start hiding these, notice that if I click on the little eye there, start hiding them, then you see that background, okay? Now there's a particular reason why I wanna do that. I um, just wanna show you. Um, it's um, trying to show you what it looks like without that image, so you can really tell what's going on here. And I'm gonna bring that image up here, and then what I'll do, I'm, I'm gonna change the opacity of that image as well. So while I have that image selected, I'm gonna look at the opacity section, and then I'm gonna click on opacity, and maybe bring that down. And what it does is it just kind of washes with the background, um, which just makes uh, the foreground uh, pop up a little bit more. So maybe something like this would be um, a really good thing. Let me go back into the image, uh, to the video itself and find some inspiration while I'm at it. So this is called QuickBooks Desktop Tutorial, Reports, Basics, and Financial Statement Analysis. You know, in, in the class that I went to, it, it was important not to make um, this stuff overcrowded so i'm not sure if i should do something else let me let me try let, let me try doing this instead i'm gonna have this uh, this text and change the color so i'm gonna make this text let me make it this green that's here on my hat okay there we go and then uh maybe i'll make yeah i think that's good okay because I, I don't want it to be too crowded maybe that will fade out a little bit and let me go into google here and type QuickBooks logo and look for 
QuickBooks logo here somewhere. See what we got. Maybe just this, uh, you know what? I think it'll be better. Let me go back into my Photoshop. I think it'll be, you know, I don't want to get in trouble with them. So I'll just use the, the little green circle here. So I'm going to click and drag that green circle into my desktop and then open up my Photoshop and click and drag that back in my Photoshop. There you go. And that was actually perfect already cropped out for me. So I'm going to make that a little bit smaller, put it here on the left hand side, make that maybe a little bit smaller, something like that. Actually, this would be perfect. I'll press enter. And by the way, I'm, I'm not saying that you can grab an image from the internet or a logo and you can use it however you please. You know, I feel pretty comfortable that what I'm doing here doesn't really hurt their brand. So I'm okay with doing that, but you probably should ask permission before you add logos and stuff like that. But I see people all the time add a YouTube logo and, and to stuff. So I'm doing the, the stroke and I'm also going to do the outer glow. So basically making everything pretty uh, consistent. Okay. That's good. Um, so now that I have this, oh, one more thing. I want to make uh, my face a little bit uh, brighter. So I'm going to select uh, my layer here, the layer of that. And then I'm going to go to image and adjustments and I'll click on curves. I don't know why these things are what they are. I, this is just how I learned it. Uh, so once I click on curves, I get this weird thing here. And what I'm doing is I want to drag somewhere in the middle of this line, drag it up. I don't know why, but that's why you do it. So I'm going to drag it up a little bit like this. And notice it makes my face a little brighter. I could play, I could play with these settings to see, you know, what, what I want in terms of contrast. I don't know what any of these things mean. So I just play around until I get what I want. Uh, maybe something like this. I guess that will work. And I'll hit OK. So that's probably a lot better. And then I'm just going to click on File, Save As. I'll save it as a... Uh, JPEG, I'll call this one thumbnail, hit OK, and then I'm going to go into YouTube, where are you, and I'm going to edit my video, okay, so if you're a YouTuber, you know what's going on here, so I'm going to edit my video, click there and edit, then I'm going to click on thumbnail, then I'm going to click on select image and thumbnail. And then I click on open. It will bring that thumbnail in there. And now you can see really big difference. So before people were seeing this atrocity here, now they're going to see this. Now, hopefully, the, the reason why we did this is because this will be a much more enticing um, video to click in than that one. So we'll watch the performance of that video to see if, the, if you know, spending the time to create those nice thumbnails works. So anyway, I know this video is not a typical thing for my channel, but if you like this, uh, hit thumbs up. Um, you know, you have to go get Photoshop. So that's going to be like 20 or $30 a month because they charge you by the month now. And, um, and add any comments below. See if, if you like this, if you'd like to, for me to do more things like this, I would love to hear your feedback.